Bridges are magnificent structures that stand as testaments to human ingenuity and engineering prowess. They are more than just pathways from one place to another. They represent the human desire to overcome obstacles and unite communities. Bridges are a crucial part of our modern infrastructure, allowing us to travel, transport goods, and expand our communities. But how are these marvels of modern engineering built? What goes into the creation of these lifelines that connect cities, countries, and continents? Join us as we delve into the intricate process of bridge construction, uncovering the secrets behind their design, materials, and construction techniques. Designing a bridge is a fascinating journey that demands meticulous planning and attention to even the tiniest details. Engineers and designers face a multitude of considerations, from the bridge's location and intended use to its environmental impact. One of the initial challenges lies in determining the most suitable type of bridge. Each type comes with its own set of unique design hurdles. Take, for instance, the suspension bridge, engineered to brave fierce winds and carry heavy loads across vast areas. On the other hand, the beam bridge finds its niche in shorter spans, necessitating robust support for substantial weights. Once the bridge type is chosen, engineers embark on a journey of simulation and modeling, meticulously testing various designs to ensure structural integrity. This phase can span months or even years as designers tirelessly strive to optimize safety, durability, and cost-effectiveness. Beyond the structural aspect, environmental concerns soar high. Bridges spanning rivers or ecologically sensitive areas undergo rigorous impact studies to safeguard local wildlife and ecosystems. In essence, the bridge design process is a pivotal endeavor, ensuring that the final product emerges as a testament to safety, efficiency, and functionality. Ensuring a bridge stays strong and reliable over time requires a deep understanding of how things work in engineering and paying close attention to even the smallest details. This way, we make sure the bridge can handle the everyday pressures it faces and lasts for a long time without any problems. Once the design of the bridge has been finalized, the next crucial step is gathering the materials essential for construction. The selection of materials hinges on various factors, including the type of bridge, its location, and its intended use. Among the most prevalent materials in bridge construction is steel renowned for its exceptional strength and durability. Steel finds its place in the construction of the bridge's frame and support structure, sourced meticulously from mills and subjected to rigorous quality control standards. Concrete, another cornerstone material, forms the bridge deck, providing a robust surface for vehicles and pedestrians alike. It also serves as the foundation, offering stability to the entire structure. Wood, asphalt, and various composites may also play roles in bridge construction. Their selection is guided by factors such as cost, availability, and project requirements. Once procured, the materials must journey to the construction site, a task laden with challenges. Especially for large-scale projects requiring substantial amounts of steel and other materials. Transport logistics may involve barges or even airlifting in some instances. Overall, the process of sourcing materials for bridge construction demands meticulous planning and coordination, emphasizing the importance of high-quality materials and efficient transport to ensure project success. Creating a strong foundation is vital for ensuring the safety and stability of any bridge. The foundation acts as a sturdy base for the bridge to sit on and helps evenly distribute its weight across the surrounding land. Various types of bridge foundations exist, such as pile foundations, caisson foundations, and spread footings, each chosen based on factors like the bridge's location and the terrain around it. To begin building the foundation, the first step is to clear the area where it will sit, removing any rocks, debris, or other obstacles. Once the site is prepared, construction of the foundation can commence. The underwater portion of a bridge tower or foundation is known as a pier, and there are three primary methods for building underwater piers. Pile foundation, coffer dam, and caisson. 
Pile foundation involves drilling down to the riverbed, inserting reinforcement bars, and then pouring concrete. Another method is using a coffer dam, which consists of individual slabs assembled to create a water-free space once water is pumped out. Once construction is complete, the coffer dam is removed. The third method involves using a caisson, a reinforced concrete box built off-site and transported to the location by a submerged vessel. The caisson is then sunk into the riverbed and filled with sand. Once the underwater piers are constructed, work on the towers begins. Since the construction site is no longer underwater, the construction process proceeds as usual. Building a foundation for a bridge is a complex undertaking that demands meticulous planning and flawless execution. The foundation must be engineered to bear immense weight and withstand the various stresses the bridge will encounter. Moreover, construction must adhere to stringent standards to guarantee the final product's safety and durability. Once the foundation is set, it's time to kick off the actual building of the bridge. This part involves some serious work involving cranes, heavy machinery, and skilled workers. First up, they've got to put in the support structure. This might mean setting up steel or concrete columns anchored to the foundation. These columns act as the main support for the bridge deck. Sometimes they're made elsewhere and brought to the site, or they're built right there using molds and equipment. Once the support structure is in place, they can start building the bridge deck. This usually means laying down steel or concrete beams across the supports and securing them tightly. They might also add a layer of asphalt or other material on top for a smooth and durable surface for cars and walkers. These decks are already made somewhere else and then lifted with a crane. They all link together and connect to the hangars. Workers have to start putting them in from the towers and work their way out on both sides. This way, everything stays balanced and the towers don't get thrown off kilter. Building a bridge is tough and complicated, especially for big or unique bridges. Sometimes they need special equipment or techniques, like cable-stayed towers or suspension bridges. Throughout the whole process, safety and quality are top priorities. Engineers and workers have to stay sharp, using things like cranes and scaffolding to make sure everyone can do their job safely and well. Once the towers are up, it's time to put on the main cables. Now these cables might look tiny from far away, but up close, they're pretty massive. Then to protect it from the weather, it gets covered with armor plates. But getting this huge cable in place is not easy. Each wire has to be installed on site, a process called cable spinning. On top of the towers, there are saddles where the cables will sit. Workers have to set up a travel ropeway and a walking platform to help move things around. The cable carrier zips back and forth across the towers, carrying small wires until there are enough to make the big main cable. This is a long process. It could take months. Once the main cable is all set, they can then install the hangers. Once the bridge is all set up, there's still some important tasks to do in order to make sure it's safe and the bridge functions well. First off, it is important to consider safety features like guardrails and lights. Guardrails prevent cars from accidentally going off the edge. They're usually made of tough materials like steel or concrete to handle any bumps they might endure. Then there's lighting, which is important for night travel. The entire bridge needs to be well lit so drivers and walkers can see properly and stay safe. But it's not all about safety. Lights are but one element used to make the bridge more aesthetically appealing. Some are painted with cool colors and others use sculptures to make it unique. All these finishing touches aren't just about safety and looks. They're also about making the bridge a source of pride for the community. A bridge that's well-made and looks good can be something people feel proud of for years to come. Bridges stand tall as symbols of human creativity and engineering, connecting communities and overcoming obstacles. From choosing the right design to gathering materials and erecting the structure, each step is a fascinating journey of innovation and precision. As cranes lift the decks into place and cables are spun across towers, it's a testament to human genius and teamwork. 
Finally, with safety and aesthetic touches for beauty, a bridge becomes more than just a structure. It's a source of pride for generations. Join us in celebrating the art and science of bridge building. Subscribe now for more videos like this.